Welcome to Mock the Mock, where I take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm Mock and give you my views, thoughts, and opinions. And I got a great one for you today as Dane Brugler from The Athletic put out a seven round mock draft. So we're going to go ahead and try to fly by this sucker. I'm very intrigued to see what just what prospects he has in the later rounds. This one is fully predictive. So kind of wild. He takes into account each team's need. There are organizational trends, prospect team pairings based on top 30 visits. So it's legit. It's legit. Let's go ahead and get into this sucker. Caleb Williams going to the Bears at one. Write it in stone. Write it in Sharpie. It's happening. Washington Commanders go with Jaden Daniels. That's where a lot of the buzz, a lot of the smoke is currently. Let's go ahead and read the blurb he has here. Uh, the draft winds will continue to swirl in unpredictable directions. Up until draft night. Right now, though, the buzz is pointed towards Daniels being picked at number two. I mean, a lot of people tabbed Jane Daniels as a Cliff, uh, Cliff Kingsbury type of quarterback. So it makes sense. I don't think Drake May is necessarily out of the run in here either. Maybe even wildcard JJ McCarthy. Uh, New England Patriots stay put at three. I don't know if they're. I imagine if it's predictive, he's going to include trades, but. Drake may go to the Patriots. I would I would love this if I'm the Patriots. You just sit back at three, get Drake May. Heck yeah, go ahead. Grab your franchise quarterback and continue to build around him through the remainder of this draft. Some people feel the Patriots are a lot farther off than I think they are. So I would say, yeah, send it. Get your franchise quarterback. All right, pick four. This is where we have the trade. This is where we have the trade. As the Minnesota Vikings, they move up, giving away a third rounder next year and picks 11 and 23. The Cardinals will now have 11 and 23, so they'll have three picks in the first round. Ought to be very exciting, but JJ McCarthy going to the Vikings. Uh, everyone from the minute that the Vikings traded for a second first round pick, people thought they were making a move to go up and get a quarterback. J.J. McCarthy feels like it'll be that quarterback with the top three quarterbacks already off the board. Uh, this is another one that's going to be very popular in predictive mocks, probably mine included. All right, so the, <laughs> the Arizona Cardinals, they pull uh, what they did last year. <laughs> they move up. They move back from 4 to 11, and then they move up from 11 to 5. So they trade picks 11 and 35 to get to pick five to take Marvin Harrison Jr. I really do feel like the Cardinals will probably walk out of this draft with Marvin Harrison Jr. I just don't know if that happens if they trade it for. I know that they traded back last year, moved back up. Doesn't mean that they're going to do it two years in a row. But I do think that uh, Jim Harbaugh is going to want a plethora of picks for his first draft class. So this does make sense. I, I have the... Chargers tabbed as the team that slides back into the first round. But Cardinals, they get Marvin Harrison Jr. Giants go with Malik Neighbors. Uh, yeah, I think uh, wide receiver is the pick here for the Giants. I think their big quarterback move in, in the offseason was Drew Locke. I, I believe that's what they think. I truly do. So they address the offensive line during free agency. Now they go out and get some receiving help for Daniel Jones in his... Potentially final year as a giant. Tennessee Titans, they go Joe Alt. Another one that's going to be a very popular pick. Is it just makes all the sense in the world. The Atlanta Falcons, they put at eight. They go Dallas Turner. Falcons are in a really good position to either they could trade down, acquire more picks with it being Raheem Morris's first draft class here at Atlanta, or they could stay put and take the top defensive player on the board they could go roman dudes and i'd be a okay with it listen i know you love the nfl draft as much as i do and you're gonna want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks 
by Venmoing or PayPaling me. Link's in the description. It's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always, technically. It's a Google spreadsheet. So send me your email when you send the payment. I'll get you hooked up. You will see my current prospect rankings and big board, my full evals. And guess what? It updates throughout the whole draft cycle. So it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel. At pick nine, the Chicago Bears go Roma Dunze. Makes a ton of sense. Uh, you get to pair him up with Keenan Allen, who is on the wrong side of 30, has an injury history. So just because they brought in Keenan Allen doesn't mean they're out of the wide receiver market. Obviously, they do have DJ Moore there, but at Roma Dunze just really sets up your franchise quarterback for success. Uh, the New York Jets go with Brock Bowers. I like this as a uh, this is just one i assume is going to happen because the, the jets they're working with a very limited small uh super bowl window they need guys that can come in and be immediate impact starters i don't know if there's going to be a tackle in this class that can do that that's probably the best long term selection they can make but i don't think that this team's not looking for the long term brock bowers immediately gets on the field and is an asset for you uh, Chargers, they got this from moving back with the <laughs> with the Cardinals, oddly enough. They go J.C. Latham. Uh, I think a tackle will be a popular pick in mocks that have the Chargers moving back. Uh, they could obviously upgrade Trey Pipkins. Jim Harbaugh, he's a, he's a guy that wants to run the football down your throat, so he wants big, strong offensive linemen there on the line. J.C. Latham is that. The Denver Broncos go with, oh, Telenise Fuanga. Oh, let's read this sucker. I'm very intrigued. Uh, with Garrett Bowles entering the final year of his deal, the Broncos have done plenty of homework on the tackles in this draft. Fuanga can compete for a spot at guard as a rookie while being a long-term plan at tackle. Question is, um, Quinn Myers, does he move to center? Like, I don't know. It's a little bit intriguing because, like, yeah, Garrett Bowles probably gone after the season. Mike McGlinchey, someone that would be gone the next year or two. Suddenly, you're not feeling great about your tackle room, but the Broncos have to leave this draft with a quarterback, in my opinion. My question is, are they going to move back up for one at some point in this draft? Uh, Terry and Arnold going to the Raiders. I love the Raiders going corner. They could definitely add more depth competition and talent to that cornerback room and i feel like they're one corner away i truly do olu fashanu going to the saints uh saints the easiest team to honestly mock for it feels like tackle is by far their most glaring and big in need with the um the unsure future with ryan ramchak trevor Penning just not being good feels like an, it's an easy one to mock Indianapolis Colts go with Quinion Mitchell. I kind of love this. Uh, there's a variety of things the Colts could do with this pick, and it'd probably be the bee's knees. Quinion Mitchell falling here would be phenomenal. Seattle Seahawks, they go Troy Fatanu. They reunite Ryan Grubb with his former tackle. Uh, Fatanu probably comes in and plays guard right off the bat, uh, competes there with Lincoln Tomlinson at left guard, but a lot of people are trying to connect the dots here. Like Seattle, this is probably like a prime trade down spot. If, if, if a team wants to move up, I'm sure they would love that. But uh, yeah, Seahawks end up going ought to do. real quick. I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor underdog fantasy, just because the football season's over doesn't mean the bet in season's over. And if you sign up at underdog fantasy using promo code Baroshmo, they will match that first deposit up to a hundred dollar news. We got baseball, basketball. They do even esports. They do it all. So if you like your weekly best ball, if you like pickums on higher and lower, then go ahead, check out Underdog Fantasy. Don't forget to use promo code BROSHMO. And as always, bet responsibly, bet within your means. The Buffalo Bills move up to 17 to get Brian Thomas. So the Bills trade picks 28, 133, and 144, and a second rounder. Golly, that's a lot of draft capital. To the Jaguars, I mean, <laughs> can't hate this for the Jags. That's a lot of draft capital. But the Bills move up. They get Brian Thomas. Feels like more of a true replacement or 
potentially even upgrade over a Gabe Davis. So I like that one for the Bills. Uh, Bengals go with Byron uh, Murphy. Uh, let's read the blurb here. With this explosive twitch and natural leverage, Murphy moves differently than any other defense tackle in this class. He is equally disruptive versus the run and when rushing the passer, something the Bengals are looking to add to their roster. I'm still in the Bengals probably should take a tackle here market, but going Byron Murphy, I think is a okay as well. Uh, we got the Rams going Jared verse uh, Dallas Turner went off at a Liatu Latu is still on the board. So, the Rams add the very powerful, the very explosive Jared Verse there across uh, across from Byron Young. So I like that pairing. Pittsburgh Steelers go with Graham Barton. He's listed as a center. He's going to be playing center there. For the Steelers, they could go tackle here. There's a bevy of picks the Steelers could go with at this portion. But Graham Barton's been a guy that's been a pretty big riser last month of boards. Miami Dolphins go with Liatu Latu. I mean, dude, I get the Dolphins weren't scared about Jalen Phillips' injury history, but now that we have so much, so many injuries at edge, I don't think you just roll the dice. And I mean, to be fair, like Liatu Latu, everything checked out with Liatu Latu well. Like, on top of that, it was really just Washington, uh, Washington, the Huskies. Their doctors were the only medical team not clearing Liatu Latu. Like, he entered the transfer portal, and a lot of teams were like, yeah, no, this guy's good to play. So, I'm not saying, hey, injury scare, but I think given the Dolphins' circumstances currently, it's probably not an ideal pick. But, it hits, it hits. Liatu Latu is hella good. Philadelphia Eagles go with Amarius Mims. To be honest, man. Eagles, they're, go they're probably going to tackle. They're probably going tackle. And Amarius Mims would be a hell of a pick there. Be the heir apparent for Lane Johnson. Sounds hella fun. Uh, Arizona Cardinals. This is pick 23 they got from Minnesota. They go with Cooper DeJean. So I actually like that fit for Jonathan Gannon's defense. Yeah, that's actually a pretty darn good fit. All right, we got the Dallas Cowboys. Ideally, the Cowboys would love to keep Tyler Smith at left guard. But it might depend on how this draft plays out in this scenario. They add the raw but toolsy tackle who they hope to be the next Tyron Smith. Okay. So they grab Tyler Guyton, who is probably going to the first round. He's just got tools like that. Uh, ends up going to Dallas here. They try to sure up the offensive line or at least. I mean, they, they got some old heads there like Zach Martin. Uh, they lost Tyler uh, Biedish. Terrence Steele's coming off a down year. So you got to take a couple of shots, I think, on the offensive line for the Cowboys. Before we get to pick 25, what's crack a lack? And it's your boy, Barosmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always. Let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that nice, beautiful football discourse. Jackson Powers Johnson. I like this one for the Packers. So this keeps Zach Tom at tackle. You get to move Josh Myers to guard. He's kind of been an okay center at best. So it definitely feels like an upgrade center with Jackson Powers Johnson. And I think Myers is at the uh, last year of his deal anyway. So I like that. Nate Wiggins going to the Bucks. They did trade Carlton Davis. I feel like they have a lot of faith though in currently who they have at corner but you can never have too many corners so if they want to take a shot on them yeah why not uh this is the next pick for the arizona cardinals as they go chop robinson so grab more edge help uh, i feel like maybe you want someone with a little bit more meat but that's not necessarily true but i think uh cardinals come out pretty good with cooper DeGene, chop robinson and marvin harrison jr Jacksonville Jaguars get Kool-Aid McKinstry in the trade down. I actually like that quite a bit. I think uh, corner is probably the top need on ja the Jaguars board. You make a case for offensive line, but I mean, this is such a deep offensive line class. They could take some shots there in the, um, in the like day two. Las Vegas Raiders trade up to get Michael Penix Jr. All right, we're going to read this sucker. 
All right, so the Raiders trade pick 44 and pick 77 for pick 29. That don't feel like enough. I could be wrong about that. Because dropping down to 44 out of the first round feels like it's going to cost a little bit more. Uh, the whispers are getting louder that the Raiders might draft Penix at 13. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, we're talking about some real draft buzz. But in this scenario... Feels like the better option, even if it means parting with a pair of day two draft picks. Polarizing player among the NFL front offices. Penix is an aggressive downfield passer with mental toughness that will certainly stand out for Pierce and his staff. So that's fascinating. I don't think the Raiders are in on quarterback in the first round. That's just my opinion. Uh, Baltimore Ravens go with Jordan Morgan. They did have a private workout with Jordan Morgan. I see this as a start now guard who maybe moves to tackle after Ronnie Stanley is done or after the Ravens are done with Ronnie Stanley. Uh, again, did have a private workout, so kind of makes sense. Jazan Newton and Johnny Newton going to the Niners. Regardless of their perceived top needs, the 49ers are always looking for upgrades along the defensive line. They love the trenches. They draft the trenches very highly. Newton doesn't have ideal size for what San Fran wants, similar to how he fits in most schemes but his disruptive nature and relentless play personality are qualities that help him overcome average measurements all right to wrap up the first round Kansas City chiefs take adonai mitchell i like it i love it i'm sure patrick mahomes would love to see more of it go ahead move to round two as he just has these suckers lists out so we'll go we'll go through them in a chunk Ladd McConkey going to the Panthers. Air apparent there to uh, Adam Thielen. You got Patriots. Kinsley Sumatea get some tackle help. Chargers, they got this pick from the Cardinals. They go Chris Jenkins. You get to reunite him in Jim Harbaugh. Patrick Paul going pretty high here to the Commanders. They get that tackle of the future. Keon Coleman going to the Chargers. I don't know if they want more big guys that might struggle to separate. That, that might just be me. Uh, Titans go Marshawn Nealon. They get some edge help. They don't really have the guy out there at edge. Uh, TJ Tampa going to the Panthers. So, yeah, grabbing more corner help kind of feels like feels like a way to go, definitely. They could go edge as well. They're, like, Panthers need quite a bit. And it's Drake Shaw Jr. going to the Commanders. Kind of feels like a... Uh, Dan Quinn type of corner, Darius Robinson. They get a verse going to the Packers, get a versatile uh, defensive lineman there. Mike Sainer still has has been tagged to the Texans quite a bit recently. Michael Hall Jr. going to the Falcons. That's a nasty little penetrator for the Falcons. Okay. Zach Frazier going to the Lions this is probably like your heir apparent for Glasgow or... Uh, rag now because i mean frazier could play either center or guard xavier worthy going to the saints so they just grab more speed ricky parasol nice nice vertical option there for the colts Jaden hicks going to the giants so they get a xavier mckinney replacement troy franklin going to the jags here my only worry is he's more christian kirk-esque and yeah, that, that was kind of a problem where like they had guys that honestly are similar skill sets, similar roles, and it, ju it just didn't create a lot of separation there. All right, we got Cooper BB going to the Bengals. This feels like a, at least competition for uh, was it Colson Volson? No, that doesn't. This doesn't sound right. Who's that cat? Who's that cat? That's playing guard for the Bengals. Colton Volson? Cord Cordell Volson. There we go. Uh, Junior Colson, speaking of which, going to the Eagles. They need linebacker help. Roman Wilson, been a very popular uh, pick there at 51 for the Steelers. Bo Nix ends up going to the Rams. That's a very ideal destination there. Uh, we got Javon Bullard going to the Eagles. They grab some safety help. Uh, Mason Smith defensive tackle is a very popular pick at 54 as they got they have a bunch of one-year deals on the interior Davion Sanders going to the Dolphins 
Dane, I don't love this mock draft for my Dolphins. I don't. Peyton Wilson going to the Cowboys. You got Christian Haynes going to the Bucks. Does this mean he's moving to left guard or maybe center? They got uh, Cody Mock there, right guard. Edwin Cooper going to the Packers. You got Rook Arohoro going to the Texans. So, D'Amico Ryans gets that defensive line help. This is a man that loves the trenches. He loves a deep rotation there in on his defensive line. You got Cole Bishop to the Bills. Braden Fisk going to the Lions. Golly. Uh, you got Xavier Leggett going to the Ravens. That sounds hella fun. Uh, Andrew Phillips going to the Niners. And then Max Melton to the Chiefs. All right. All right. Uh, he's got a few thoughts here on some of his selections. Um, yeah, I don't think there was. Yeah, those weren't these weren't the ones I was actually pretty interested in. Let's run through the third round. Uh, so you got Jonathan Brooks. Wow, going to the Panthers there. Doorless Cardinals. Lisa Isaac, Manders, Malachi Corley, the Patriots. I feel like you want to get a more versatile wide receiver. Because, I mean, Pop Douglas is essentially what at least Mal Malachi Corley is going to do early on. Uh, Blake Quorum going to the Chargers. Another reunite. Uh, Jim Harbaugh and one of his former Michigan players. Trey Benson going here to the Giants. That's a really good pickup for the Giants. Uh, I'm going to see if there's any uh, any picks that just catch my eye. There's the Broncos. They go Spencer Rattler, finally. So they finally get their quarterback. Uh, you got Rosengard in here, making it to uh, pick 78. I think that's a good pickup for the Commanders. Devontae's Walker. Uh-oh, they get a little speed, vertical threat there. Uh, we do have a tie another tight end off the board to the Bengals with Theo Johnson. Jonah Ellis is kind of a fun pick for the Seahawks. Uh... Let's see there's Jermaine Burden to the Rams got we got a couple of tap uh, developmental tackles here to the Browns and Steelers and Blake Fisher and Kieran Amagaji uh, another running back uh, Cowboys go with Jalen Wright here Austin Booker to the Bucks that feels fun okay Caden Wallace sneaking into into day two here ends up going to the Packers probably a guy to develop uh, another pen maybe they love Penn State tackles. I don't know. There's uh Trevor Wallace to the Bucks. Uh Malik Mustafa to the Ravens. Very fascinating one. Yeah, very fascinating indeed. Uh here is DJ James going to the Bengals. I'm not that high on James. I don't think he's that physically imposing. I know he put on some weight, but He's just not my cup of tea. He's a guy that I'd rather someone else take a shot on on day two. Like day three, I feel a little bit better about him. All right, let's go ahead and move to the fourth round. We're officially in day three territory. All right, Ben Sinnott, first player off the board in the fourth round. Ends up going to the Panthers. That's fascinating. Uh, Cedric Van Pran going in there. Uh, to compete for the Cardinals at center. Uh, wow, another quarterback quickly off the board here. Michael Pratt to the Giants. Uh, Delmar Glaze. Hey, watch out, man. I, I actually like him as a guard in the uh, NFL. Watch out for him. Hunter Norzad. Love that he's getting some shine. Going to be going to the Chargers here, which I think Corey Lindsey hasn't decided yet if he wants to retire or not. Uh, you got Tavondre Sweat finally coming off the board. That's a great pickup for the Bengals here in the fourth. Uh, Dominique Campton, I'm a big fan of. Safety going to the Seahawks here. You got Brownlee going to the Steelers. That's hella fun. Uh, there's Jalen McMillan going to the Eagles. Let's see. I like Brandon Coleman. It's a nice flexible guard tackle type for the Texans. Uh, you got a, you got three running backs back to back here. Audric Estime coming in being a big strong boy there for the Bucks. Ray Davis is a nice like, he's a nice backup there for Josh uh, Jacobs. And then Will Shipley they grab some speed there, Texans. 
Uh, Javon Baker. Uh, I have a feeling Javon Baker probably falls out of out of day two, just with how good this wide receiver class is. But he ends up going to the Bills here. Mason McCormick feels like a steal at 129 for the Vikings. I love it. They haven't signed Dalton uh, Reisner back yet, so something to look out for. Uh, Bucky Irvin coming off the board here for the Chiefs. Very fascinating. Zach Zittner, honestly, the injury kind of what pushes him down uh, the board a little bit, but good pickup for the Niners here. So, it's, uh, oh yeah, I didn't even notice uh, Mohamed Kamara coming off the board there for Baltimore. I like that one actually quite a bit. All right, fifth round. We're going to start off with the Broncos taking Dick Marion uh, Richardson and Mississippi State. Big fan of his. Uh, we got... Uh, Jeremiah Trotter fall into the fifth round here. Yeah, he's definitely a day three guy, like early day three. But goes to the Chargers. That seems good. Uh, Renardo Green, man. Maybe I'm just higher on him than the general consensus. Ends up going here to the Jags in the fifth round. Feels kind of good. Uh, Tyke Smith. This also feels a little bit low for him. Uh, going to the Falcons at 43. Uh, we got our first special team player off the board, I believe, in Torre uh, or Tory Taylor out of Iowa. Not my top-rated punter. Uh, who is my top-rated punter? It's a Texas Tech kid, right? Yep, Austin uh, McNamara. There we go. Words are fun. Uh, here's actually like three guys I'm pretty high on, and one that broke my heart. <laughs> Leonard Taylor but uh you got Tyrone Tracy Jr I absolutely love he's running back five for me this would be a good pickup for the Colts a guy that could just do it all uh Edifon Elel Fosho going to the commanders feels really good he, I think he's a sack uh, a third round player so him making it to the fifth is good value and then the Jaguars they take uh Isaac Garendo who's got a lot of upside a lot of upside you see uh, Quantez Stiggers going to the Vikings here. I really like that quite a bit, man. I really do. I think he's a fifth rounder for sure. Christian Boyd kind of feels as a, feels like a fifth rounder as well. Going to the Dolphins here. There we go. We finally addressed the interior. Hello. Let's go. Bo Limmer, man. Fifth rounder. I'm just higher on him than I guess the consensus. Uh, going to the Bills. Who else we got? Who else we got? Oh, man. Braden McGregor, man. This feels a little high for him. Not too high, though. It's the fifth round. Not going to criticize the fifth round terribly. Uh, I do like the Marcus Harris pickup here for the Saints. Uh, Elijah Jones of the Packers. Get to reunite him with uh, his former coach. You got MJ Devonshire. Another player I really like going to the Eagles here. That's a good fifth round pickup. Uh, you got, oh man, I can never say his name. Feels like a developmental guy. Uh, here, let me pull up the pronunciation. Or do, 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 do. It's just a fun name. Goatlib Ayidze. Goatlib Ayidze. That is just a hell of fun name. Uh, you got Jordan McGee, who I'm actually pretty high, a little bit higher on. Go to the Niners here. Let's see, what, what were some of his favorite picks? Oh yeah, Dylan Lobby going to the going to the Saints is kind of fun. All right, let's go to the sixth round. I'm I'm kind of looking for like someone to shock me, like oh wow man, this guy really fell. Uh, but Anaya Smith going to the Vikings here. You got uh, Devin Leary going to the Jets. Hello. Okay. Okay. We're going to. Yeah, he's a late day three quarterback. That's fine. That's fine. Rasheen Ali. Falcons going running back. Pfft, gotta love it. Jerry and Jones being around, being available here in the six, man. Like, oh, I think I think he's he can play outside, he can play inside. Probably best profiles in the slot. But man, I'd be willing to take that guy at the back end of the third round. Or back, yeah, back end of the third round. Uh, you have Jordan Travis coming off the board as well to the Seahawks here. 
Uh, McKinley Jackson, honestly, this is kind of around his range, mid day three. Uh, we got another quarterback in Joe Milton. Sorry, Desmond Ritter. Ta ta. Or may, I don't know. Maybe you're drafting Joe Milton to play tight end. Uh, the Dolphins take. I like a newsium here out of Colorado State. The corner, pretty solid athlete. Had a solid. He had an all right week at the Shrine too. Uh, we got a kicker off the board. The Alabama kicker. I think he's my top rated kicker as well. He is indeed my top rated kicker. Uh, Jacob Monk, I like quite a bit. I don't think he's a center in the NFL. I think he's a guard, though. But I, I like him. I think I got a fifth-round grade on him. Uh, Ethan Driscoll, I think, is a UDFA. Just going to throw it out there. Lions take Sione Vaki. Is he a safety? Is he a slot? Is he a running back? Who knows? Who knows? Chris Jacobs, a guy that tests out really well for Penn State. Going here to the Broncos. Uh, there's Kalen Keene, man. The fall is real. Cut, came into the season as a first-round buzz type of player. Uh, you got Giovanni Manu, uh, Manu out of British Columbia. Yo, he tested out really well. And like, like let's go over it, over it real quick. Let's go over it. All right. So at a British Columbia, coming in at six seven three fifty two, ran a five. 06 40 30, uh, 33 and a half inch vert is just absolutely ridiculous so yeah dude tested out real well but probably looks like a project uh clean duke i'm not that high on i kind of got him as a udfa we'll go xavier weaver one of the cowboys a little undersized but good athlete uh ryan watts i actually like quite a bit i think he's a safety but he's a ridiculously long athlete uh i do like the bump means to the patriots though all right seventh round garrett greensfield man i'm just higher on him i think he's early day three really do that'd be a good gift for the chiefs there uh sam hartman we see another quarterback come off the board here to the Bengals. dwight mclaughlin dude near and dear to my heart i love dwight mclaughlin but he ends up going to the uh chargers here uh what else we got a going on shaw smith wade wow that feels a little low for him feels a little low he ends up going to the uh cowboys here uh mark perry out of tcu i feel like he is the uh best safety there out of tcu uh where do i have him i have him seventh round so this lines up you got a couple of other special teamers and cameron little kicker out of arkansas and ryan uh, Rayco out of BYU, the punter. Uh, KT Leviston, another guy I'm a little bit more high on. I Byron Matos. I have not watched this cat. He's not even on my watch list. Not even on my list list. You know what? I'm going to make a program a note to at least see what I can find out about him. Because, I mean, if... Dane's gonna give him some love. I wanna I wanna at least know about the guy. Alright. So we'll come back and watch you, buddy. Or <laughs> at least your pro day, I guess. Uh who, what else? What else we got going on here? There's Trey Taylor out of Air Force. Good versatile defensive back. Logan Lee. Logan Lee had a really good shrine. But body type is a little meh. I know a lot of people like Kamal Hayden out of uh, Tennessee. I like him too. It's a really, really good corner class. Then Mr. Irrelevant ends up being uh, Dylan Johnson. Running back out of Washington. They also take CJ Hansen, who actually, I, I like that pick. Going to Holy Cross. See some of uh, Dane's thoughts. Uh, Evan Anderson going to the Raiders. Actually, honestly, get, gets a big, big boy there on the interior. I don't mind that. Uh, Tylen Grable out of uh, Central Florida. This is a guy I think he used to play tight end. I think he played quarterback too back in high school. He had made the transition to tight end, and then made the transition to tackle once in uh, college, but. Man, yeah, he's one of those Raz guys I could see the Colts swinging on. Uh, Kamani Vidal, 
did go to the Bills here. So very, very interesting. That was fun. That was fun. He also includes the team by team results. If you have a, a subscription to the Athletic, go ahead, check it out, see how your team did. But that's it for the video. I have been pushing out draft content for y'all. If y'all want my final position rankings for the draft, go ahead, check those videos out down here. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.